Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. For today's video, I am very excited because I finally finished my first ever Nihonga painting that is 100% made with traditional materials and it was really a labor of love, so I hope you all enjoy it as much as I did making it. To begin, I wanted to talk a little bit about the paper that I'm using. It's called washi, and it's a specially treated paper. The treatment process is something called sizing, and it's treated with alum and the glue that I use to hold the pigment to the paper. Nihonga uses stones and minerals for the pigments, but I didn't really understand that the stones will actually come in different sizes, so this one is a little bit too big to be ground up the way that I wanted it to. In other videos, it seemed so easy, but unfortunately, I couldn't get the exact look that I wanted to with this pigment. Eventually, I started using a mortar and pestle because it was the only thing strong enough to turn it into the powder that I needed to create the paint that I wanted. I also made a kind of critical error. You're supposed to add a little bit of water with the glue to make it into a much, much less thick paint. And here, I couldn't get the result that I wanted. It was a bit frustrating, but I just decided to go with it and try my best. Even though this isn't what I typically do in watercolor, it was still kind of interesting. My mistake was that I didn't add water into the pigment itself, and also I didn't wet the paper nearly enough. I wanted something that was very runny and light, but instead for my first couple of attempts, I got something that was very thick. see, the paint is actually sticking to the brush. The ink here actually helped to dilute some of the pigment. For this paint, I did actually use a little bit of water with the pigment, and you can see that it became a lot lighter and much, much easier to spread around. Now 
Nihonga paint is actually extremely interesting because of its flexibility and I think it's kind of a combination of watercolor and acrylic. You can honestly do so much with it. As I progressed with the painting, all of the different brushstrokes and techniques started to become very intuitive. Something also that I noticed is when you mix the paint with your finger, it does tend to bind with the glue a lot easier. I think it's because our fingers are warm and it helps melt the glue a little bit more. After adding more water and mixing with my finger, I really started to get the hang of applying the pigment to the paper. Eventually, the whole process became much, much smoother as time went on. It's a lot easier to add fine details with Nihonga than, say, watercolor. You can control the paint a lot easier, I think. You can really see the difference at how watery the paint has become and how easy it is to just spread around compared to when I first started.
I decided to add some gold leaf to the piece because I was really happy with the composition overall, but it just felt like it was missing a little something. Gold leaf is notoriously difficult to work with, and you have to be very, very careful and use a delicate touch. The Nihonga glue is actually extremely excellent for holding the gold leaf onto the paper. It's very strong, but it was very easy to make it very, very smooth. The scissors definitely made things a lot easier, and I also recommend using tweezers as well, as the leaf can stick to everything. After it's dry, just dust it off with a paintbrush, and you should be golden. So thank you all for watching my video. If you like what you see, please subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. I love you all, and I hope you have a fantastic day. Thank you, thank you so much.